Hey guys, and welcome back to some more DM Duel commentary. So this one started up a little bit late. I was like, oh, I need to record some more DM Duel commentary, but I have, like, no one uh, around at this current time. It's like 6.30 in the morning because uh, it's actually Saturday, the day of regional, so I'm trying to get everything recorded for both Saturday and Sunday so I can go out to regionals and not have to worry about bringing you guys any content or missing content. So, uh, really, I don't have anybody here with me for this uh, DM Duel commentary, which kind of sucks. So I'm jumping into this door a little late because I actually took my mic out to go record, uh, you know, uh, Daniel and Friends, but Daniel and Friends play, but then uh, we didn't, so I, I was like, oh, okay, well, I got to record, I'm going to record, and then I started it's like, alright, let's start recording, and my mic is not here, so I had to go run over, get the mic. These two, this is probably like turn five, but this door has literally not, nothing has happened, nothing. Anyway, I think he played an upstart, but literally it's just been... It has just been just set back row pass, set back row pass, set back row pass, set back row pass, 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 pass. So you can clearly see the regeki breaks and the and the and you know and just oh my god, you know, just a ton, a ton of back row. So uh, we have a uh, metal sick, mental sick, my bad, mental stick sick here with seven hundred and seven, and we had Bill Hater here with thirteen thirty one. And, oh my god, just saw that. So, we know that Bill was using, it looks like, um, Burning Abyss artifacts. And, um, Mental Sick here is using probably something similar, Burning Abyss. I mean, you should, you could probably tell that it's Burning Abyss from the ass ton of back row. Like I said, Yu-Gi-Oh, Yu-Gi-Oh is ass ton of back row. I mean, it, it's pretty clear, you yeah. know. So, yeah. I know. It's, it's one of the things that sucks about Yu-Gi-Oh! Especially with Burning Abyss, because that deck really doesn't have any bite. So, it likes to play a lot of back row to, you know, get some of that bite that it doesn't have. So, he's going to tribute the Skarn for Ryza. So, not a terrible play. Oh, he's going to chain the MST. That's a pretty good play. I would chain it, too. And you really don't want that MST. Oh, wow. Another Sanctum. Oh, my God. Just all the Sanctum. Wow, that sucks. And, well, he had all three Vanities, so... Oh, his, his opponent doesn't have to worry about Vanny anymore. Like I said, Vanny's is the card of the format. I swear. Everybody in the mother playing Vanny. You know, we, we predicted that it was going to get hit in the previous list. Because it was like, why shouldn't this card get hit? But then it didn't get hit. And then, of course, Konami puts out that article on their freaking forum thing. And they're like, hey, guess what's getting reprinted? And 5D's world, Vanity's emptiness. And it's just like, you son of a bitches. You fucking son of a bitches. I see what you did there. You know, is it healthy for the game state? Hell no. Another Vanity's format's never healthy. But after you get your reprints, after you make your money, we can go ahead and hit that card. So that's definitely, definitely uh, going to be on my balance prediction. Definitely. Because. Uh, hey, it happens. Uh, that shit happens. There you go. You know, Yu-Gi-Oh! is still uh, based on luck. You know, you could be the most skilled duelist in the entire universe. And, you know, you, you're still subject to the luck of the draw. So, that's another thing that kind of sucks about Yu-Gi-Oh! I'm trying to get into Smash lately. You know, Smash on the 3DS. And, you know, had a lot fun, more fun with that because skill. Skill, you know. You know, your matchups may be bad, you know. I just don't like how like one of my favorite characters is a top tier character, uh, uh, being uh, Sheik, because you know I really like Sheik. Sheik is my like my favorite character since like like Melee, and now all of a sudden in 3DS, Sheik is like arguably the best character in the game. Some people say that you know that uh, you know Bowser. Some people say. Little Matt, but no, not Little Matt, but no, mostly when I hear who's the best character, it's either, it's either Bowser or Sheik, and I, you know, I'm okay with Bowser, you know, definitely Bowser has some handicaps that allow me to do much better with him than I would usually do in the previous games, because Bowser's just that strong, but, uh, yeah, I like Sheik, Sheik is my favorite character, and the funny thing is that I'm not that good with Sheik when it comes to comparison to the other characters, like, Sheik, you think top two character, anybody can just jump on it, but, you know, most of the time when I fight with Sheik, I get my butt kicked, you know. Of course, I like Greninja. Greninja's my favorite starter, so I was going to pick up Greninja even though he, even if he wasn't good, but Greninja's pretty good. Um, 
I'm pretty decent with Little Mac. He's pretty easy. His moves really flow really well together. You know, his dash punch, and then he can immediately start going to his punch combo. She can't do that. You know, she runs up and then hits you with her run move. Oh, that's game. That that that's game. GG. G fucking G. You know, she runs up and hits you with that uh, dash move. She can't immediately go into that uh, punch combo. Little Mac can, so he'll kind of just run up, try to sock you, you'll block it, and he'll just start punching the shit you, uppercut you. Uh, little Mac's good. He's just terrible, terrible recovery, so if you're ever fighting a Little Mac, you get to the edge and just grab him and throw him off and, and kick him, and then kick him, and then he won't be able to recover. It's, it's that simple. Literally that simple. Just grab, throw. Jump off the edge, kick. You're probably using a character with much better recovery than Little Mac, unless it's a uh, unless it's a mirror match. And in that case, stay in the middle and duke it out. But if you, you you're probably using a character who has better recovery than Little Mac, because I think every character has better recovery than Little Mac. So, uh, yeah, just go ahead and just grab, throw, kick them off, kick them farther off, kick them so. Yeah, you because know, they'll probably because if you grab and throw them, they'll probably either just jump back on and try to do the uppercut spin. They're uppy. And you know, they'll just kick them farther away, and then they'll start heading down. Then they'll try to do their whole side punch, then probably miss the edge and die. So, no, like I said, Lil Mac, his recovery is kind of poop, so that's how you handle him. Well, some good with. I'm good with characters that are kind of arbitrary. I'm pretty decent with Pac Man, just because he's funny. I'm pretty decent with Bowser Jr., pretty decent with. Uh. Rosalina and her tall, tall ass. She's so tall. <laughs> Rosalina's like probably like the tallest person on Smash, I think. She's taller than Ganondorf. She's taller than. She's taller than Palatina. She's tall. <laughs> anyway, we are now on game two. Let me stop talking about Smash. I'm getting Smash, you know. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Burning Abyss versus Burning Abyss. Fun, I know. Uh, ton of ass, ton of back row. So go ahead and start setting it. Three, four, five sets of back row. Mathematician. Okay. Just that ass, 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 ton of back row. Actually going to regionals today in Vegas, and I know there's going to be Burning Abyss players, and I know there's going to be ass, ton of back row. <sighs> I'll probably lose just because of that ass, ton of back row, but I'm prepared for it, because that's just Yu Gi Oh! for you. I swear. Yu-Gi-Oh! would be a totally different game if there is never any back row. No other card game has back row like Yu-Gi-Oh! really does suck that they could just one-up one you and hinder your plays because they got back row. It really does freaking suck. Sometimes it's just like, I don't, I don't even want to play Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> but, uh, eh. It's the game that we choose to play, right? So, only two back row. But, like I said, knowing Burning Abyss, that deck can play back row that no other deck can play, so, you know, well, it shouldn't play, like, uh, you know, Karma Cut, Phoenix Wing Wind Blast, and stuff like that, because generally you would neg off of playing cards like that, so. That's one of the advantages you get for uh, playing Burning Abyss, I guess. And like I said, the deck needs to play back row, it doesn't have any bite. You know, Dante is just a, a glorified, uh, Frickin', uh, what's his name? Card Trooper. Uh, and also you have Rank Up Magic Astral Force. You're not going into the Pleiades, who does have some bite. That's pretty sad that you gotta use a whole different archetype's boss mush to give yourself some bite. But then, if Rank Up Magic Astral Force was not even a card, that's all that deck would be. It's just, it's just back row, back row, back row, because it would have no bite. It would have literally no bite. <clears throat> so... To make sure that it has a little bit of bite with it, it's got to run that back row. It's got to one-up you while still plussing off of its plays until it wins. That's, that's pretty much burning, what Burning Abyss is. So, I, I mean, I don't want to accuse it of being a simple deck, but it really is. You know, you know as you guys know, uh, Burning Abyss Uvel is actually a deck on uh, Vitamin Y, and I was thinking about maybe taking it off of Vitamin Y just because the deck doesn't have any bite without back row. And... I'm not going to play any background on that deck for Vitamin Y, because the point of Vitamin Y is to show the power of Ubel without the use of back row. You know, that I don't really need back row, even with, uh, uh, what was it, Ubel Beat, still, you know, I took out the background and the deck still did fairly well, but, well, no, it actually did crappy, actually. 
Right. It started falling apart when I took out the background stuff. Because then I, I lost some of my bite, and that's what I'm saying. That's what some of these decks are. The back row is the bite, and without the back row, there is no bite, you know? You know? Dino Rabbit was, yes, Dino Rabbit was scary with the Loggy and Dokas, but what made the Loggy and Doka even scarier was, of course, uh, you know, the back row with the Loggias and Dokas. That's what made the deck scarier. Much scarier. So, uh, he Phoenix 1 1 blasted his monster right back in his hand so he doesn't get to play Yu Gi Oh! Which hinders him for a turn. Like, probably running Abyss's best aces up their sleeve is that Phoenix 1 1 blast. Alright, Phoenix 1 1 blast, Vanities. Same, same, like I said, same plays over and over again. You know? like I said, you, you think of think, think of this duel if no one was playing any back row. Think of how this duel would be going if no one right now played any back row. It would be a much different duel. Much different duel. Because I know they're both meaning like triple Phoenix Wing Wing Blast and triple Vanity Zemptus. Like I said, I was thinking about just taking the deck off of Vitamin Y. Putting something else on, I can't really think of anything at the moment, I'll probably think of something. And then putting it on daily duels where I, on a day that I don't tag, just so uh, I can run all that back row and I can actually use Burning Abyss, you know. Because, you know, Shadals, they don't really need any back row. Yang Zing, they don't really need any back row, but Burning Abyss, they have no bite. They have no bite. Shadals, their bite is in their monsters, I mean, of course, and they don't run that much back row. They'll probably run, like, maybe Triple Vanities, because everybody runs Triple Vanities. Uh, triple of their uh, sinister shadow games, and uh, maybe just like regular staples. But you know, I, generally when I see Shadow decks, I don't see an ass ton of back row. But just running abyss, and I know lots of people are playing Burning Abyss, and they're only going to play more when a uh, when a uh, Birdle comes out. Well, like I said, of course on here it's free. Like I said, this entire duel we haven't even seen Dante. It's literally just been one up back row because no one's been able to whip out a Dante because it's just been one up back row. So that's pretty sad that there's so much back row in the game that no one can actually summon their boss out. So I have to say his opponent only has one back row. Are we about to see a Dante for like a split second before he gets Phoenix one one wing wing I hate that name of that card. Phoenix Wing Wind Blast? No, Regeki break. Right, pretty much the same thing. And what's that other one? Karma Cut? What's that? It's all the same thing. Just back row, back row, back row. Now I've been hearing a ton of people say that, you know, the back row should get hit, but the back row is not the problem. The back row would be nothing without the deck. Now think about it. Konami, Konami does this shit on purpose. Like, these, you know, the reason why uh, these decks are the top decks and the reason why Regeki is not that good around, it's all Konami's fault. This is the way they, they make the decks in Yu-Gi-Oh. They, they do this on purpose. They make decks that... Uh, will res do effects in the graveyard and continue to net you pluses because generally in Yu-Gi-Oh! history those decks last much longer than a deck that does not get graveyard effects. You know, there's a reason why Satella Knights have kind of fell off because they can't keep up with the resources uh, that uh, Burning Abyss and uh, Shadows get. They can't keep up with it. So, you know, if they would have made it like, you know, they had like a graveyard effect like, oh, when, like, like Burning Abyss, if Shadows, I mean, if Satella Knights would have had an effect like Burning Abyss, like, when they're sent to the graveyard, not even, just even detaching, sent to the graveyard, they get some effect, then Satella Knights would still be a really good deck, because, you know, they would still be just netting pluses for just doing your thing, and that's what, that's what makes Burning Abyss so powerful, is that you get pluses just for doing your thing. You know, and... Of course, uh, with graveyard heavy reliant decks, you know everybody's like, okay, well I'm just gonna side in, you know, G Fissure, Macro, and uh, Soul Drain. But of course, those cards are at one, and they're at one for a reason, because Konami wants them at one, you know, because they know that if a deck continues to thrive, the long, the more they make money off of, you know, because that's one of the worrying things. So instead of you know, they're they're trying to solve the problem with uh. Of course, the top decks being both Dark, Burning Abyss, and Shadows in comparison to Telenites, but they give them that uh, Gastelanite Diamond, who is pretty much like the card that likes to say, uh, fuck, like, almost every Dark deck. Uh, did the wrong move. Oh, are we actually going to see a Dante? That would be interesting. No! Okay. Who the fuck is that? Hello? Never seen this card before. Okay. Ooh. 
That's actually pretty. This first one is right here. Banish any monster to show by battle with this card. So, yeah, once per turn, any player starting to have a material from the target one face of monster. That's actually not too terrible. Like I said, if you can get that card out, that's not too terrible. That might actually help him uh, win this duel. Who won the first duel? Uh, I think it was Bill. Oh, of course, Compulse. Of course. I mean. Mmm. I mean, of course, he'll still get uh, all his effects with his detached monsters. That's what I'm saying. They should have did that with the Telenites. But they didn't. And now that deck is flopping. Telenites would definitely be uh, top tier if they had some detached effects. like Just like Burning Abyss. Like, if they're sent to the graveyard, they get, they get some effects. They would definitely be. But, nope. Because, like I said, one little background you neg so hard, but with Burning Abyss, I like, see, he'll be fine. Look at all them pluses that he gets. He'll be fine. The Skarn, the Sir, the Graph, you know, Virgil, Dante. Yeah. So, you know, by, by getting, you know, resources for your play, it, it re just reassures that you can commit to your play because you know you're not going to neg, you know? And I, I, I definitely know this feeling because I play Constellars, and, you know, I, I, I know the pain when, you know, I whip out Pleiades and it's nice and powerful, and then I get Regekied, and then I neg so hard that it's not even funny. You know? No, but if, like I said, I hope that Konami doesn't continue making decks like that where they get effects from when they're detached, but it seems like they're starting to head into the Pendulum era. The question is, uh... Will uh will Kleeput be an actual top deck? See, Vanity's emptiness again. Yeah, that's literally what we're all gonna we're all gonna be seeing in this duel, in this format. You know, especially with this reprint, I'm not sure how hard it would be to obtain Vanity's emptiness now since it's got a reprint. But I know that's just gonna be more accessible than just a Star Strike Blast common. So, you know. Like I said, if you're not running Vanity's this format, I don't know what you're doing. Like I said, and this is before I'm going to the regionals. I will leave it out of the regionals later. Well, not later today. Like in a couple hours. And uh, I know that you know, if I enter, I know I'm going to go against Running Abyss. And I know I'm going to go against it all. I know I'm going to have to face the Vanity's emptiness. You know? There's a reason why I side deck Triple Twisters. Because I know people are going to side in Triple Vanity's emptiness if they're not playing it already. And or Triple Lightning Prisoning. So, to, uh, you know... And leave, relieve myself of just uh, recklessly, uh, you know, blind spacing. I'm gonna run the twisters, and the twisters are pretty much going to uh, allow me to only hit those cards that are the problem cards. And generally, those cards that are the problem cards for Castellas are the continuous trap cards. I mean, the continuous, yeah, the continuous trap cards, because that's pretty much what this format is. Oh yeah, start Stygian Dirge as well. Yeah, Stygian Dirge. Actually, you know what? Probably gonna put in his end mains just for Stygian Dirge. I know everybody in the mud is gonna try to put it against me because they're gonna be like, Oh, you're a casualty. I've been waiting for Telenites and uh, Burning Abyss, so here you go, from Stellar Player. And I'll be like, Haha, you can't make a Pleiades. And I'll be like, Alright, well, you know what? I'm gonna make a Zen mains. And Zen mains during the end phase is going to go ahead and pop that Stygian Dirge. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, actually kind of sucks. I did not get the cards that I needed to just do my pure Constellas. Oh my god, is that Dante on the field? Hello? Finally. I did not get the cards that I needed to make just my pure Constellas in the mail, so I'm actually going to be entering with the Constellar deck. The the one that I did the deck profile on. I'm just going to go with that deck. Uh, maybe. Maybe. There might be a change because I'm not sure if the fr my friend who has my the, the, the third Vanities is coming. So I'll, if not, and I only have two Vanity's Emptiness, I'll probably just main deck Grand Mole, just because Grand Mole's really good against Shadows, and Shadows are one of my war. Oh, and kind of Burning Abyss, just, you know, of course, they still get their effects when they're sent to the graveyard, so, you know, so if I attack into, like, a Dante or something, they'll still get their effects of the monsters that were detested and sent to the graveyard, which will kind of suck, but, hey, what you gonna do, right? And, uh, you know. And what was, what was it? Billy breaks a Shadal Burning Abyss artifact deck, like disgusting. Sixty card, disgusting. Because generally, you can you can beat like one of the with sighting. You can beat one of the three engines. You know, 
but all three of them all together at once is a very difficult do oh my god oh sorry I said I said no reason why I said oh my god is because I I'm playing I'm talking no, of course I'm talking but I'm also uh, playing Smash right now you might use might be able to hear it probably not it's kind of quiet if you can I apologize but uh I'm playing Smash right now, and I just bitch nigga fingered and uh, side beat myself off using uh, Little Mac. So the snuggles are real. <sighs> anyway, and I said it's just it's too many engines. So I said this this format should be the end of vanities, whether it gets limited to one or banned. I don't really give a shit. And definitely, definitely the end of the artifact engine because. The artifact engine is just too damn strong, too damn strong. Like those, those two things are probably the biggest hits that need to happen for this next upcoming list. And the funny thing is that those are the things that should have got hit last list, but they didn't, and now they're causing problems in the same damn format. So, I guess we're just gonna have to deal with it, right? So, I'm not sure how I'm going to do in the regionals. Of course, I will give you guys a, a tournament report and stuff like that. I'm going to try, like I said, I'm going to try. Oh, I, got, I got plenty of side for Burning Abyss. Especially, of course, I'm siding the Royal Decree, of course. Because, you know, every tournament, every type of tournament, someone tries to enter with freaking uh, some type of burn deck. And, of course, like I said, Burning Abyss, uh... They play on a lot of background. They rely on a lot of background. So if I can just go ahead and flip up a royal decree, and uh, someone please, that's pretty much game. Yeah, you because know? you can go ahead and get your monsters effects when they're set to the grave. But I'm still gonna out resource you. You're gonna you're gonna you're gonna neg. You're gonna get hurt too much by my plays, especially without it. Like I said, I'm also uh, citing Kaiser. So how about you just never make a Dante? How about that? <laughs> How's that sound? I think that sounds like a fine idea to me so yeah so I'm kind of worried like I said last time I went to a major tournament which was uh, YCS Las Vegas I think a year ago or a little no it was earlier this year wasn't it yeah it was earlier this year uh, last time I went uh, I lost two I think raccoons because he just asked kind of back me because, like I said, the deck really doesn't have much bite because, and like I said, that's what sucks. When decks don't have much bite, they rely on back row. And, you know, that's not something that you see in any other card game but Yu-Gi-Oh! Where, oh, my card's monsters aren't that good, but, you know, as long as I have back row, I'll be fine, so. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. You know. And I was thinking about just main decking the Royal Decree and my Constellars, but, of course, you know. One of the scariest things about Constellar is, is also, as well, the back row. I mean, I got bite, but, you know, the, the back row just puts on additional pressure, which I totally don't mind doing completely. Uh, so I'm going with the hypocrite route, which a lot of people are doing, uh, you know, just going with the, with the trap stuns and the, and the trap stuns and the vanity's emptiness and stunning not only yours, but your opponents as well. I don't know. This video is like 24 minutes. I'm going to cut it, and then I'm going to go ahead and do Duel 3, and if that's not long enough, then we'll go ahead and get another Duel in for uh, Sunday. So, I uh, apologize that it's just me today. Uh, I said no one is on to join me in recordings. It's really early in the morning. It's like 6.45, so yeah, no one's on. Anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed this episode of Daniel Commentary. I uh, hope that some of my, what I said was informative for, you know, at least a uh, little bit entertaining. So uh, thanks for watching, thanks for all the support, and I will see you guys tomorrow with uh, Game 3, and uh, if that's not long enough, maybe like a single duel. Thanks for watching.